Hi everyone. So today I am finally doing part one for the ranking of all Iron Maiden albums. And I want to start by saying I pretty much love Alice. Well, I don't love all of them, but I at least like all these albums. I do um, like them in different levels, but I think they all have good parts, at least one or two great songs. There will be some that may be kind of surprising to you and will kind of go against the current or against the stream, I don't know how it's said, but um, the first one is, you know, number 16, is kind of the usual one to say is the worst, and that is Virtual Eleven. My main issue with this uh, album is pretty much just The Angel and the Gambler. I think it's such an ugly song, especially because of those keyboards and, you know, everyone, as everyone says, the chorus just repeats itself a little too much or a, a lot too much and it does not have to be 10 minutes long, like, there is no reason why it should be 10 minutes long so I don't know what Steve Harris was thinking with that one but it still has some great stuff going on Lightning Strikes Twice is definitely a really underrated song there the Educated Fool is really great, Future Real is good. Also another issue with this album is the fact that it just sounds kind of bland. I, I don't really know much about music production and engineering or anything like that, but I can tell you that there's something about the sound in this album that just feels kind of empty or hollow. And it's just not very nice to listen to this album as a whole be just because of that. Well, well, not just because of that, but that's also one of the reasons why it is number 16. Also, can I just say, I mean, Blaze Bailey doesn't really fit the sound of this album as much as a Bruce did, so... And I do like this album, like I said, but one has to be number 16, and I think it is, um, it is most accurate to have this one be at the lowest. So number 15 is Fear of the Dark, and this is actually funny. The song Fear of the Dark was... I think the first song by Iron Maiden that I ever listened to, maybe the first heavy metal song that I listened to, and when I did, I was really impressed. I was like, wow, this is really something new and beautiful, but of course, I would eventually listen to even better things. So this is not really that impressive one of, of an album in general for me. Of course, that song live is completely different. It really is a beautiful experience, but I think that this album has... I would say just some lazy parts, maybe kind of blander and even kind of cheesier songs. Um, Chains of Misery I don't think is great. The operation most people think is not that good and I do too, I don't think it's very good. Um, Weekend Warrior is not even fun for me, but it still has some great stuff. Um, be Quick or Be Dead, I think... Um, Afraid to Shoot Strangers, Wasting Love especially, I do like The Fugitive as well. I think those are the strongest ones here. Although the second half of the album is kind of the weaker one. And that's why I'm putting this at number 15 because just as a whole it's really not that enjoyable for me. So my number 14 is No Pray For The Dying. Well this actually used to be the lowest one, but the more I listen to it the more kind of simple beauty I find in it. I think there's some... There's a there's just something going on. Uh, Fate's warning. I think it's really pretty to listen to. You know, uh, Holy Smoke is just fun. I think the Assassin is also pretty fun. Most people would really dislike this song. The one that I would say I dislike is Hooks in You. Like Brucey. I don't actually dislike Bruce's raspy vocals in this album, nor in Fear of the Dark. I think they're, they sound nice, I think they fit the song, the um, the sound of the albums, but there is definitely not what he's known for, and I, I still think this album has great stuff, like I said. Also the, the title track I think is good, Mother Russia, and it just has interesting parts going on, it's not just like a flat, bland, uninspired, um, album i think there's still some passion in this album so but it's still not good i mean it's also simple um maybe the songs are a little much like each other or maybe seem kind of corny and cheesy at times especially ones like hooks in you that number 15 is the final frontier this is kind of the most awkward placement for me to have in this video 
because this is among their most recent ones and this is the first album that came out after I started listening to them. I started listening to the to Iron Maiden maybe 2000, like late 2009 or early 2010. So I was excited for this. My issue with this album is pretty much the fact that I think the best songs are in the middle. I don't really care for the first one um, or El Dorado or The Man Who Will Be King or When the Wild Wind Blows. Um, those are, I would say, maybe the weakest ones here. Uh, uh, my favorites are A Mother of Mercy, um, Starblind and Talisman. I would say those are kind of the really the ones that don't, um, I don't feel they are too long or I would say they are the most interesting. And the thing is that the concepts that they use for the lyrics in this album are interesting and I think that they are nice to work with but the lyrics themselves I don't think are the best possible execution of those concepts. And even just outside of the lyrics I feel like songs like I Love Avalon kind of go on for a little too long and even the intro for the album it just doesn't really do it for me and I mean it definitely has like a purpose and I think that it does achieve something, um, something atmospheric I guess but I don't find it very interesting to listen to so this is number 13. Number 12 is Dance of Death and I think most people do agree with this pick. It's, it definitely is one of hits and misses I would say and the thing is that it has some really great songs but most of them I feel are kind of, I, I'm either um, kind of ambivalent about, I have mixed feelings about them or I just kind of really don't like them much. There's kind of a contrast between the verses and the choruses in these in these songs in the sense that sometimes the choruses are much much better than the verses in the same song and sometimes the verses are much better and, and so on. So for example Montegur has, in general it's, I really really like it, it's one of my favorite of this album but there's some verses post up uh, uh, right after the chorus that are not that i just have this weird happy sound and that's a common thing in this album they just have these happier sounding um parts that are kind of strange to listen to same with age of innocence and songs like new frontier my favorite ones here, like I said, are Montsecour, the title track, Passion Dale, and Face in the Sand. Those are so beautiful and I really love them, but there's something about them. There's something about the others that just makes me want to skip them. And they just feel like cluster in comparison to those other really great songs. And another thing is that the first and the last tracks of this album are really i would say one of those not so great ones um they have never really grown on me and i like them i can listen to them but the difference i think in quality between one song and the next is really stark and those songs that are those bad ones they're not that terrible again um and they have good parts i think all of them but in comparison to those great songs, it just feels like they had these amazing songs and they just wanted to make some filler for them. So number 11 is Killers and apparently some people are super defensive about this album. And the songs, I have to say, um, here are definitely, I would say, fun, but they kind of sound a little like each other. They're not very interesting songs. Even in concept, the songs kind of sound like the same thing. It's usually about some guy um, who either committed a crime and is running away or didn't commit a crime and was just accused and you know, something like that. Or um, It's basically just about murder, which makes sense because um, the title is killer. And I do think the way that the songs are placed is really ideal. I mean, Prodigal Son is right up before the much faster Purgatory and the bonus tracks I really like, Twilight Zone is a really great one that I love from them. It also has one of my favorite album covers 
it bothers me actually that Eddie hasn't had hair in maybe 25 years or so. I don't know why that's been a thing that nobody even mentions, but whatever. Uh, Prodigal Son, actually, I, I don't like that song as much. And Drifter is also kind of those weaker ones from this album for me. I do like the instrumentals from this album, but I do think they can get a little tiring to listen to when you're listening to the album as a whole, I would say. I don't think that this is their best album um, in which all the songs are memorable and equally great. Um, it's a great album, but they have even better stuff, so that's the main reason why it's number 11. Number 10 is The Book of Souls, and their most recent one, of course. I feel this is the main criticism, really, that people have of this album. It is that the songs go on for too long and this and that. I don't think that is true to an extent. What's funny, though, is that my favorite ones here are more or less the longer ones. Um, the ones that are long, but, for example, the red and the black, the title track, Shadows of the Valley, I do like, and If Eternity Should Fail, and the way unknown, those are my favorite ones here. But I do feel that for the most part, the songs could, pretty much all of them, could be ideally a little bit shorter, just to be, you know, I guess at their best. But I don't think it works too much against this album. I think it's still enjoyable. I do have to say, I have mixed feelings about this. Um, about the main, I guess the most talked about track in here, which is Empire of the Clouds. Some people say it's the best thing they listen to, some people say it's kind of uh, the weakest part where that forced length is um, the most obvious. I think that it is a nice song, it's enjoyable, I don't think it really feels as long as it is. But for one, it definitely could be shortened and be even better. And also there's some lines in the lyrics that are, I don't want to say corny, but my god, I mean, the line of the Titanic fits inside, like, maybe write something else, you know? Um, and also, but the dreamers may die, but dreamers live on. I think that's really beautiful. I think that's precisely um, what exemplifies or, I guess, gives you the essence of what the song is about. So... I do like that song, but I'm not really on either side of like, it's the best thing ever or it's really wor the worst song of the album. I actually feel much more positively about the If Eternity Should Fail, the first track. And I also saw them live for the first time when they were cheering for this album. So I have some sort of emotional attachment to this, especially the first track, because they started off with that one. So I like this album, honestly, no matter what. And I do enjoy it a lot, but it does have flaws. And just to be enjoyed, the, I guess, best way to, as a front to back listen, it's, it would have been better off being slightly shorter, but I do like the album, I think it's great. And again, the only reason why this is number 10 is because they have even better albums.